Okay, we're going to take a look at how to set up source tree to work with GitHub. And this process is a little bit fiddly, but if you follow the instructions here, it should work. It'll take you about 10 minutes, and then you won't have to worry about it ever again. The first thing you need to do is to head over to GitHub itself, assuming you have a GitHub account, and you go into your settings. You then head into your developer settings, and then you head into what's called personal access tokens. Now, what is a personal access token? This is what GitHub uses to allow external applications to access your GitHub repository on your behalf. It gives you an extra level of security over using just a straight password. And it turns out that this is the only way to access with source tree. What we're going to do then is generate a new token and we're going to call this source tree because we're going to hand this over to source tree to um, be able to access our GitHub repository. We can set an expiry date. So for example, if we set it to three months, then in three months, we'll have to go through this whole process again. It is possible to have no expiration at all, in which case we won't have to do it again, but we'll pay a penalty, obviously, of having less security. We then select what we want this access token to permit. And really what we're looking for is the ability to do stuff with our repository. We then go ahead and hit generate token. And this magic token here is what we're going to use in source tree to be able to access our account. So we go ahead and copy this. And now we have access available to us. So the next step is to configure source tree itself. So if you haven't downloaded source tree yet, go ahead and download it. Now source tree requires us to log in using an Atlassian account. If you don't have one yet, then go ahead and create one. Otherwise, just select Bitbucket and move your way in. Go through an authorization process where we put in our user ID and password. And then gives us the option of deciding which tools we want. The Git tools are already included, which is what we want. Mercurial is another source code repository system. We don't want that. So we just go ahead and unclick it. We fill in our name that we want to use for commits and our user ID. Um, we don't want to use an SSH key. And we're now in. Our next step is going to create an account for GitHub, allowing us to get to our GitHub repositories. So the hosting service, not too surprisingly, is going to be GitHub. The preferred protocol is indeed HTTPS. The next bit that's a bit tricky is the authentication method. So the default OAuth does not work with GitHub. So we actually move to basic. We put in our GitHub user ID, whatever that may be and then we hit refresh password. This then allows us to put in the password and we don't put in our GitHub password. Instead, we put in that personal access token that we created earlier. So we paste that in and hit okay. And lo and behold, the authentication has worked. This then lets us see all of the projects that we have available in our GitHub repository. We can even select if we have different organizations, we can select between them. And if we want to grab a hold of one of our projects, we just hit clone. So here, for example, is a project, I'm going to clone it. And it's asking for my password again, I'm going to provide that access token. And it goes ahead and lets me clone. And lo and behold, that project is now available for me to use. 